Following up on our previous video on one electron integrals, we're now going to look at two electron integrals, which will be the bane of our existence for the remainder of this entire computational chemistry course. So following up on the one electron operators from the previous video, we now have two electron operators, which I noted there are only the electron-electron repulsion that is going to uh, be a two electron operator. So that's going to be a pairwise sum, sum i equals 1 to n, sum j equals i plus 1 to n of the 1 over rij operator, the inverse distance of the electrons from one another. Or we might more uh, succinctly express it as sum i less than j 1 over rij. Okay, so since it's just the 1 over r12 operator for a given pair of electrons, we can just, for our you know, uh, two, for our two electron operator here, we're just going to put it, substitute one over R12 because that really is the only two electron operator that we're interested in. All right, so doing the same type of substitution we did in the previous video for one electron integrals, one electron operators, we end up with these four integrals if we consider the case of a two electron determinant. So a two electron determinant, there are only two, there's only one pair of electrons there, electron one and electron two. So after we simplify things, we get the same expression we had in the previous video, where we get a one half from the multiplication of the one over square root of two normalization constant in psi star and psi. And we get two terms which are positive, two terms which are negative due to the signs of the terms within the determinant. And we get an integral over the coordinates of electron 1 and electron 2. But now there's no further simplification that can be done at this point because this 1 over r12 operator does depend on the coordinates of electron 1 and electron 2. So this is basically as simple as we can make it at this point. So just note that the 1s and 2s stay the same in these columns here. So these highlights underneath of these indicate where the chi 1s and chi 2s are changing. So what we're going to do here is take uh, the third and fourth lines and we're going to just switch the indices 1 and 2 because these really are dummy indices. You know, we, are into, we don't care which electrons they are, we just care that we get a consistent set of them. So if we exchange the 1s and the 2s, uh, if, we, if we swap the 1 and 2 dummy indices in lines 3 and 4 here, uh, then what happens is two of these lines end up being equal to one another, kind of uh, the positives and the negatives end up being the same once we swap the ones and twos, and we get two kinds of integrals as a result. We get one kind of integral, which is positive, where we see that we have electron one is in chi one on the right and the left, so chi star one and chi one. And electron 2 is in spin orbital 2 in both the complex conjugate and on the normal one. So, and in the other case, it's not. It's, there's a negative sign, and you have different spin orbitals. The electron is in on opposite sides. Kind of each electron is in both of those spin orbitals uh, on each of the opposite sides of the complex conjugate. So this is going to give rise to two different types of integrals, one which we'll indicate as kind of this 1, 2, 1, 2, where we have this kind of Dirac brocket now, but instead of having one term on the right and the left, we have two terms on each side. So we have this kind of 1, 2, 1, 2, uh, indicating which uh, spin orbital each of the electrons is in of the four terms. And then we have this 1, 2, 2, 1. And altogether, we're going to combine this into a into a uh, double term here, which we'll call one two double bar two one, uh, which we'll discuss more about in a second. Okay, so according to this notation, then our two electron energy is going to be a pairwise sum. So we are considered all, concerned with all pairs of electrons in the molecule from uh, one to n pairwise sum of this first type of integral ij ij and the second type of integral ij ji where the first one is positive and the second one is negative 
or more succinctly as we might express that it's a pairwise sum of this ij double bar ij integral which is also equal to a pairwise sum of what we might call the vij or the electron potential between those two. Okay, so there's in these two types of integrals that I've mentioned thus far, uh, there's two kinds. There's what we would call physicist notation and chemist notation. So first of all, in the physicist notation, we have what I've indicated here, where you have the stars on the left and the, the regular wave, the regular spin orbitals on the right. So in physicist notation, electron one and electron two complex conjugate are on the left, and uh, electron one and electron two in their regular spin orbitals are on the right. So that's what this IJKL is. And alternatively, in the chemist notation, where we don't indicate with the kind of Dirac bracket, but we indicate with the kind of more traditional bracket, just the sort of thing that on a US keyboard is just to the right of the letter P, of, an, of if I take the same letters of where they were in the physicist notation becomes IKJL rather than IJKL. Because in the chemist notation, what you have is uh, electron one is on the left and electron two is on the right, each of them paired with their corresponding complex conjugate on each side. So I personally prefer chemist notation because it makes it a lot easier to interpret and see the fact of what these two integrals are, as I'll mention in a second here. So in the first case, we have electron one in chi star one and chi one, which is just the uh, density of electron one in spin orbital one. And we have electron two in chi star two and chi two, which is just the density of electron two in spin orbital two. And the operator between them is one over R12, kind of more repulsion the closer they get. So what this corresponds to is sort of the classical electrostatic repulsion energy of electron one in orbital one and electron two in orbital two. Or once we formalize it here, electron one in orbital I and electron two in orbital J, according to the physicist notation integral. All right, so what these integrals will be called, as we'll discuss in later videos, is going to be called a Coulomb integral because it's the classical electrostatic repulsion of these two electrons and these two orbitals. And then what you'll notice in the uh, physicist integral at the bottom here is the stars stay the same, but the regular orbitals switch. So now what happens is we have a mixture of kind of the overlap of of orbital one and orbital two for electron one and the overlap of orbital two and orbital one for electron two. And this is what happens when you have exchanged electron one and electron two in their spin orbitals. So unsurprisingly, the second kind of integral is called an exchange integral. And this doesn't have a classical analog. This exchange integral only comes from the fact that our electrons are in a determinant and this satisfies all of that weird Pauli exclusion principle stuff. So I'll discuss uh, Coulomb and exchange integrals in much greater detail in later videos, but for now I'll just note that the interaction between two electrons and thus all pairs of electrons which will interact in this way is going to be a Coulomb integral minus an exchange integral leading to that total two electron, in two electron interaction between all of our electron pairs.